Hey everyone, this is Ross, and today I want to talk to you guys about my pomegranates. I've been growing 11 or 12 different varieties of pomegranates here in containers in the Philadelphia area. We have them here on the patio, and believe it or not, they are fruiting. They are definitely flowering. They flowered last year, but a lot of those flowers had dropped off, and I was wondering, oh man, maybe they were male flowers. Maybe they weren't female flowers. Maybe they just were not getting pollinated because the pomegranate it's such a foreign thing here for the bees that I don't know if they really know what to do. Because we are here in Philadelphia, very far away from the origin of, or even a place that you can really grow pomegranates well. Um, I do also, not only to give you guys and just talk about my potted pomegranates here, I want to talk about my in-ground pomegranate tree back in the corner over there. That is a variety called Salavatsky that we planted this spring. So we'll get to that in a minute. But I think because they're flowering so heavily, which I'm very surprised by the way, I was very shocked because we had all these pomegranate trees in the greenhouse because they are in containers. We can move them. They kind of treat them like a fig, right? You take the fig after dormancy and you put them away somewhere. You can put them in the garage, you put them underneath the sunroom. You can put them there in the greenhouse, which is where all the pomegranates were. Because they were in the greenhouse, they got a nice head start. They leafed out very early. But they're not like figs. They, when they wake up from dormancy, they leaf out like within the week. And they're really going. Um, whereas the figs very slow and they really take their time to bud out. So as a result, I couldn't get to all the pomegranates. And some of them really took a hit in the greenhouse. And that's why they look kind of dead. There's a lot of dead wood here. Because a lot of that, and I even cut some out right here. Uh, that's really the only cuts I really made, but a lot of this is just not looking too good. And I was very shocked because I thought my pomegranate season was done. I thought this was it. I screwed up again. Uh, I'm not going to get pomegranates, but lo and behold, these things are loaded. Um, and again, these are like four-year-old trees now. So this is their fourth spring. And I think that has a lot to do with it. I think the age has a lot to do with it. Um, I think also the way that we have been training them the first two years we really trained them and tried to get them to the right form in containers I think it's definitely beneficial to limit the number of canes from the base to maybe maybe even two or three um, you know stake them up because they definitely like to fall all over the place um, and get that form get that nice trunk system going and then once you get that system you're gonna get nice branching up top and let that do its thing, I think. I had one year where I really pruned these things heavily and I think that didn't help these guys fruit at a younger age. I think, I think I'm probably like a year behind of where I should be with these trees. So definitely don't prune them as much as you would think. You know, really go easy on them. In fact, this year um, I am gonna prune them but I'm gonna just kind of chop them back across the top at a certain height. And that's only really because we're going to let them be situated now underneath the sunroom. We're not going to give them that head start. I think getting them in the greenhouse is just a bad idea. Getting them the water that they need is just a bad idea. It's just not going to happen. Sorry for that motorcycle, guys. But the point is, I think that's just a better strategy. Um, so for the containers, that's what we're doing. That's kind of how we've been you know, progressing through the seasons now. And then we're going to have to pollinate these like I was kind of getting to. And all these flowers, I think, the bees, again, they just don't know what to do with them. And the big issue here, though, is which of these is a male flower and which of these is a female flower? So one of them has already fallen off, and I think this is a male. And you can kind of tell by the bottom here. So this is the where all the pollen is and all that male portion of it, right? Whereas the bottom is really gonna be that determinant. If it's thicker on the bottom, then that's a female flower. If it's more of a vase shape, which I didn't actually think this was more of a vase shape. I thought this one was actually kind of thick. We just dropped it. But if you look here at this one, this one looks more like a female to me. This one looks different than any of the other flowers I've seen thus far. So for me, that's kind of where I'm at with this. I'm not 100% sure, but what I'm gonna do is really just pollinate these by hand. and. I don't really know the expert, the best way to do this, other than just to 
really come in here and rub this with your thumb. Okay, I just got a ton of pollen on me. And then I'm going to rub the next one here, which, believe it or not, I don't think is, uh, it's really good enough. Because to be honest with you, I read it online and I read it on a, uh, an educational article a university had put out. I think it was the University of Georgia. And they were saying that this only has like a two or three day thing here. So if you really want to pollinate these things, you got to be on it. And that really should have done it if that was indeed how this all worked out. I don't know, but there's definitely pollen on my hand and that was really nice to see. But I think that's what our strategy is going to be moving forward with these is not putting them in the greenhouse, hand pollinating them. And I, so I think because they actually took a big hit, we may not prune them really that much at all. I'm gonna take a lot of this dead wood out. And also we fertilize them really heavily along with the fig trees. And I think that really helps. Like the figs are also fruiting because of that. So I think a, a really good feed in the beginning of the year is going to be key to get these trees happy and healthy. Um, and the fruit for us. So let's move on now to the in-ground Salavatsky. And I did a video talking about how this tree had survived the winter with absolutely no damage. And I was blown away. But it turns out that it did take damage. And the entire tree, believe it or not, if I do the scratch test up here, this is alive. And for some reason, it just doesn't leaf out. So I think the buds higher up on the tree just didn't make it maybe there was some desiccation i don't know but if we come down in here at the base it is alive and it is leafing out down there so we're gonna have to restart this was the first year that this tree was in the ground so who knows but this isn't really the windiest location as far as i know but we are going to be using wilt proof which we didn't use last year on the pomegranate i think it's a really good idea especially because they're related to the crepe myrtle and as we know about myrtles, if anyone knows anything about myrtles, is that they're not very hardy, especially in zone seven, uh, a lower zone seven anyway. You can definitely grow them along the beach, uh, but they're kind of iffy here. And I think the pomegranate's the same way. And they also really suffer from the wind. So I think um, desiccation is gonna be one of my biggest enemies here. And that's what we're gonna focus on with the in-ground tree because I know for sure that um, I have friends that have been growing Salavatsky here actually in 6B. So I'm in zone 7A and we only got down to two degrees Fahrenheit this year and they have had better success than I have. So something's definitely going on, but I have at least three or four friends in the area in 6B that have a Salavatsky in the ground that fruits for them every year. And uh, that's just really cool. So for me, Pomegranates all the way, man. We're gonna try to grow these and try to take these as seriously as we can. Obviously our hearts are in the figs, but uh, this is a really nice and interesting fruit and I love it. So, all right guys, take care. If you wanna hear more and kind of see these updates on these pomegranates, just like the video, follow us. And if you enjoyed it really, um, give it a share. You know, you know someone who grows pomegranates, share this one with them and we'll catch you all for tomorrow's video. Take care, guys. See you later.